We're named RP3, Rail Pollution Protection Pittsburgh, because even on a good day, giant diesel train engines emit huge amounts of tiny invisible particulate matter, which gets in our lungs and causes or aggravates serious health issues. That's why we're part of the BREATHE project working to improve air quality in our region. But we worry most about the inevitable bad day, when, not if, a hazmat train derails. You're watching oil moving through downtown. I shot this last week. You can see trains on these tracks 20 times every day, in the near future, 80 times per day. We'll start with some historical perspective on the industry. Let's look at a rail bridge on the North Shore where the tracks pass over Merchant Street at the southwest corner of Allegheny Commons. The bridge dates from 1905 and was the first bridge in Norfolk Southern's PVCP, the Pittsburgh Vertical Clearance Project, to be rebuilt, completed last year. This is how the bridge looks today. Here's how it looked two years ago. In 2018, the railroad hired engineers to assess the bridge, as you see it here, and decide whether it could be saved or must be replaced. Their pictures show a steel structure in advanced decay. The bright spots you see in the plate steel here are daylight shining through holes. This photo shows 100% section loss, which is technical talk for no metal here, can't support any load. When the engineers published their report, we were shocked to see one image in particular. It's not that we were surprised at the bridge condition, we visited the site, but the plain statement of what caused the serious damage was new to us. It's directly attributed to an accident in 1934, though neither the railroad nor the engineering company told us this was no small incident. We've learned that a passenger train belonging to the long gone Pennsylvania Railroad jumped the track, crashing into the Clark Bar factory and an apartment building below the bridge. People died. Again, that's the very same bridge we've been looking at. This was national news. Nine died, 40 were injured. We don't trivialize the loss of life, the horrific injuries, or the property damage. Indeed, the potential for such calamity is why we're here. As we see throughout our region, rail infrastructure is typically allowed to deteriorate until it falls apart. Bridges needn't end this way. We'll take a quick look at two. This is the McCulloch Bridge, most call it 16th Street. It's 99 years old, and the photos tell the story. The city maintains it well. There are no obvious signs of age or wear. It looks like it could easily go another 99 years. It's really in great shape. Just a half mile down river, which you can see in this photo, looking over the railing of the McCulloch Bridge at the Fort Wayne Bridge next to the Convention Center. This is my personal nightmare bridge. It's the pivotal link between Northern, Norfolk Southern's Fort Wayne and Pittsburgh lines connecting right through the heart of the city. The Fort Wayne is 118 years old, built in 1905. There are two types of aging that concern me. The first is the structural steel itself. There are holes, which you can see here, flaking horizontal metal at the base of these beams retains water. It seeps into the cracks. There's little or no protective paint. There are holes at the top here. There are holes at the bottom. This is the worst part. This is the bottom of a beam that has absorbed water, rusted, and it expands as it rusts. It flakes off and it loses most of its strength. Some of the decrepit metal looks quite artistic. And these scenes are visible throughout the bridge. This is one of the worst locations. It's directly opposite the convention center. The horizontal steel beams at the bottom of this concrete used to be straight. They're now sagging and it looks like there's not much strength left in that structure. The second problem is the concrete support piers. This is one where what used to be wrought iron rebar has disintegrated completely. This was built, the, the original stone piers were built in 19, 1854 and are themselves fine, but the bridge was raised in 1918 by order of the War Department. It was lifted several feet to allow taller boats to pass. The concrete is in terrible condition. The rebar is just falling apart, there's nothing left. I wouldn't bet on this structure lasting beyond next week. Remember that the Merchant Street Bridge didn't get this way overnight. It was neglected for many years, many decades. Pennsylvania has more working railroads than any other state and 5,600 miles of track. Pittsburgh has more bridges than any place on earth, so we're biased, but we think there are more rail bridges here too. To our knowledge, no one has a complete inventory, which makes it impossible to completely monitor their safety. When Fern Hollow collapsed and most dangerous bridge lists appeared everywhere, we never saw the Fort Wayne mentioned. We don't think rail only bridges are track. That's untenable. We suggest the FRA be required to complete a catalog of these structures keep records current, 
and share the data with state transportation departments. To close, let's return to Merchant Street, the crash in 1934. The Interstate Commerce Commission's extensive report at the time documented the accident, quote, was caused by excessive speed on a sharp curve, close quote. Evidence showed the speed limit on the curve before the bridge was 25, but the train was doing 60. The air operated brakes, the same Civil War era technology railroads refuse to modernize today, checked out fine. Nearly 100 years have passed, and it's the same story. Technology is readily available, which can prevent catastrophic rail accidents. It works where it's installed, but it's not widely adopted by the industry because it takes capital to implement improvements. We need a watchdog concerned only with the public good, not the bottom line. Build on our momentum by signing the petition to close the loopholes. Again, the link is in the chat. Thanks for your attention.